Namaste. So reading some of the comments on the channel, <laughs> um, this one guy came up and said, well, since the four states of consciousness are sequential, and I went, what? Wait a minute. I replied, where did you get that idea? And he didn't respond to my question, but where did he get that idea? And looking into it, I think combination of uh, naive understanding or misunderstanding of consciousness, uh, maybe a lack of experience in self-observation, and the limitations of human language um, made this kind of misunderstanding practically inevitable. And if one person has it, I'm, I'm willing to bet out of our 5,000 subscribers that 1,000 or 2,000 also have it because it's a perfectly natural mistake. So let's correct it. <laughs> First of all, let's look at the problem and how it arose. Here is the good old chart of the four stages of consciousness. Now, a chart, you know, it's based on a spreadsheet model. And any chart is going to have, you know, clear lines between the different categories. It's, you know, it's, that's just what a chart is, right? And so the uh, tendency is going to be to take those as clear boundaries, which means that the states of consciousness, jagrat, svapna, sushupti, and turiya, are separate, distinct things. Huh? Well, they're not. <laughs> they're not at all, especially from the point of view of an experienced meditator. So I have come up with a model. Now remember, a model is just an ontological device, okay? It's a mental construct, a fabrication. Like Buddha admitted, his concept of the Eightfold Path is a fabrication, something he made up to assist people, like a ladder, which, again, classified the steps of the path into right view, right action, and so on. So he admitted that's a fabrication. And if you actually follow the Buddha's instructions, something very rare these days, but it does happen now and then. Um, for example, in my case, uh, I went through the jhanas one by one, and gradually all of the steps of the Eightfold Path were realized. Uh, as a byproduct or as a natural consequence of attaining the eight jhanas or states of meditation. So in the same way, or in a similar way, we have made a model, and the model is based on the form of a tetrahedron. Now a tetrahedron is a regular solid with four sides, four triangular sides, each of those sides is completely flat, uh, a triangle, equilateral triangle. And so we're going to make each one of the sides of this figure correspond to one of the states of consciousness. Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. Now, if you look at one side of the tetrahedron at a time, you, it appears that the states of consciousness are separate, discontinuous, and could be experienced sequentially. However, <laughs> if you select a different viewpoint, it's possible to see more than one side of the triangle at a time. So how could that be, and how would that look in real life? Okay, consider Jagrat. Here we are sitting in Jagrat consciousness making a video, right? And at the same time, while you're watching the video, your mind is racing trying to figure out what the heck is he talking about, right? 
isn't it? Well, when you read a good book, that's a better example. You're reading a novel and it's describing some kind of a scene or some kind of action or something or other. And in your mind, you have a picture of it, right? Isn't that a dream? Yes, it is a dream. <laughs> That's Swapna. So Swapna consciousness can appear as an overlay or as a superimposition on Jagrat consciousness. And it happens all the time. Language in general is an overlay a terministic screen, remember that term? Terministic screen between us and our reality, between us and our experience. And it's a way to describe our experience and sort it into different buckets, huh? categories, even as it's happening. And of course, the primary categories are pleasurable, displeasurable, and neutral, right? So this is going on, this software is running, huh? at the same time we're experiencing the material world with our bodily senses. So the direct experience of the bodily senses is something we haven't known really since maybe early infancy or early childhood at the latest, because it gets overlaid with this dream called language. Now, let's go back to the chart. The chart suggests that the four states of consciousness are separate, divisible, discontinuous. So that metaphor is not as good as the tetrahedron, which suggests that two or even all three states of consciousness can exist simultaneously. But now the, the kicker is <laughs> Turiya is different from the other states of consciousness. The other three states of consciousness are aimed at or have as their object the physical mind and senses, the body in other words. Whereas Turiya's object is the other three states of consciousness. In other words, Turiya is the fundamental, ineluctably subjective awareness, the unconditioned consciousness, if you will, that observes the conditioned consciousness and is at the root of all of them. And so, okay, the question then comes up, well, how do I observe this in real life? And the answer is, well, as we pointed out, it's very easy to see Swapna overlaid on Jagrat. It's not so easy to see where Sushupti comes in. But Sushupti is ignorance. Sushupti is just the things you're not paying attention to. They get covered by Sushupti. Now, I think this is a wrong use and perversion of Sushupti, and I'll tell you why because Sushupti is described in the scriptures as causative only. It does not receive any effects. That's why there are no objects in Sushupti. It's complete emptiness. Well, not exactly emptiness. It's nothingness. And the difference is that emptiness, in emptiness, there's no becoming because there's no time, space, etc. But in, empt in nothingness, <laughs> there is the infrastructure of space, time, and so forth. And so objects can come into existence in Sushupti, uh, and that's how you shift from Sushupti to Svapna. And by giving them up is how you shift from Svapna to Sushupti. You should watch this. You should develop lucid dreaming and watch all this. Every night when you go to sleep. Huh? So, okay, the, the problem is that although ignorance or sushupti appears to be just nothing, in fact, 
it's highly causative. In fact, it's only causative. It does not receive any effects, including the act of knowing, the act of knowledge. In other words, consciousness. You cannot see Sushupti with Swapna or Jangrat. It simply appears not to exist. And anything that you put in there, it doesn't exist either. So, for example, when we're concentrating, like when I'm making this movie, I'm concentrating on what I'm saying. And I'm putting all my attention or most of my attention into that. And I'm not paying attention to the beautiful morning, the sunshine, the birds, the beautiful trees. All of that is like fading into the background. Because why? I'm covering it. It's like I have blinders on. Huh? Like I can't see. I pretend not to be able to see all that stuff. Or not to experience like the sensation of my body sitting on the couch and all like that. So this selective attention is actually how we choose where a, a specific experience or impression lands in our consciousness. If it's a type of impression that is not desirable at the moment due to our concentration on a specific task, then it tends to land in sushupti, <laughs> in darkness, in ignorance. But sushupti isn't ignorance. Sushupti is the absolute in disguise. <laughs> I fooled you. The absolute Shiva in disguise is the cause of all causes, sarvakaranakaranam. So that same quality is present in Sushupti consciousness, that it becomes a cause of whatever you throw into it. Right? So our problem is, we have so many miscellaneous stray thoughts that are mostly coming from outside, reading the news, listening to stupid people talk, <laughs> or whatever, you know, bad inputs, right? And, for example, advertising. Everybody has become inured to advertising on the Internet, and you just kind of shove it in the back of your mind and forget about it, right? Right? <laughs> well, good luck with that, because brand advertisers know. I used to work for one. That's how I know this. Brand advertisers know that even if you don't see something directly, if you don't give it your attention, it goes into your subconscious mind, and it affects your dreams. That's why they fly in expensive psychologists to consult on ad campaigns, huh? where the psychologists actually work for the ad firms. It's bizarre. Anyway, you don't want to lose control of the thoughts going into Sushupti because they will come out in some other form that you can't predict. For example, through watching all these subliminal projections of advertising, Whenever you see an attractive object like a new car or a new computer or something like that, you begin to lust for it. I mean, it's almost a sexual lust, you know? I got to have this thing, right? It's, <laughs> it's the animal coming out from Sushupti, fed by or prompted by, as we talked about in God GPT, your miscellaneous stray thoughts. So all the three stages of ordinary conditioned consciousness exist simultaneously, and it's just a question of where we put our attention. And specifically, what impressions, what experiences we direct or allow to show up in which state of consciousness. And, of course, the problem is that because most of us, our, our minds are out of control, <laughs> we throw all kinds of garbage into Sushupti and then wonder why we don't feel good, and wonder why we get anxious and depressed and so on. But that's a different topic, <laughs> which we already covered in God GPT. So I'll leave you with that and uh, Try to understand, okay, that the boundaries between the different states of consciousness are only conceptual. Aung Tatsa.
ओम शक्ति ही ओम ओम नमः शिवाय